what's going on you guys welcome back to another video so i hope you all had a wonderful weekend a very peaceful and stress-free weekend i want to talk about some of the illogical ways of narcissistic thinking narcissists have some of the most crazy ways of thinking and they usually confuse us with the way they think which is what they want to do they want to confuse us narcissists their illogical thinking it stems from um entitlement having power and control over you um in consideration for others a lack of empathy of course punishment and so much more but some of the examples of how a narcissist think illogically is let's say for example you know you don't agree with them on something when you don't agree with a narcissist on something they have a very bad attitude about it and they will give you the silent treatment and the reason why is because narcissists they don't understand the definition of preference and opinion and what makes them seem like they always contradict themselves is that they have this attitude of they can they can dish it out but they can't take it and that what makes them seem entitled and it makes them just feel like well you know i have the right to feel the way i do but when it comes to another person expressing their thoughts on something the narcissist they go completely silent you know they're really not trying to hear you out they're turning their back on you they are very very rude and inconsiderate of your feelings but they expect the complete opposite reaction from you and when you take that away from them you know they can't wait to to have that get back moment at you but let them do that to you they want you to run behind them for an explanation they want you to beg them and you know just pretty much over explain why you feel the way you feel which you have every right to feel confused because that is what it is it's all about confusion that's what they want to do they want to confuse you they have illogical ways of thinking when it comes to um you know just being ahead of you all the time the narcissist you know they will go into competition with you about something that they really don't care about just to prove that they can beat you at it that's just how competitive they are they always want to be in the lead they always want to be on top they always have something to prove about how much better they are at doing something than you are and another way that narcissists they think illogically it's like when you are forced to set these boundaries with them whether it's through co-parenting or you know you're just not on that friendship level as you used to be so you have to set boundaries and you're kind of falling back from dealing with them of course the narcissist is going to pick up on it especially if you change the way you communicate with them through gray rock so narcissists they can't handle that they don't want change and they feel like you are being disobedient to them and so for that they have to punish you and the way they punish you in the get back moment is you know you set these boundaries that they refuse to respect they refuse to respect those boundaries but they have no other choice to but to um accept certain boundaries the narcissist will go completely silent on you and the reason being is that they just feel entitled they feel like that you have no right to turn your back on them you have no right to make these changes to y'all's relationship or whatever you know you have no logical reason to feel the way you do if the narcissist don't agree with your thoughts then they're gonna just completely shut you out like you don't even matter they don't value anyone else's you know uh opinions on anything like your thoughts and opinions just don't matter and they will stop speaking to you as if you've done them something wrong and that they use that as a form of punishment and control because of course the way they use it as control is they figure that if i stop speaking back then they're gonna you know they're gonna be curious as to why i'm not speaking to them and they just kind of want you to bite the bait so that they can tell you well you know like they really don't have no logical explanation as to why they go silent on you when you set boundaries i mean what are they gonna say i stopped speaking to you because you don't want to be my friend anymore or something like that it's like you know where's the logic in that you have every right to set boundaries and you know do what's necessary for you and 
your peace of mind. And if the narcissist can't deal with it, then tough. Then you just don't have to speak with them at all. You know what? Just tell them, say, sue me. Sue me. Take them to court behind it. I bet you they will not leave out of there with a win because of their illogical thinking. And it's like, now some narcissists, they play very dirty and it all depends on your situation with them, especially with co-parenting because not only they're going to use their child as a reason to latch themselves onto you and to play a dirty game of, you know, punish and control. So you have to be very, very careful with the way you deal with the narcissist when you're co-parenting and you set boundaries, you know, because it can kind of backfire on you, which it wouldn't be right to backfire on you because you're doing what you're supposed to do to have a healthy, you know, communication level with them. But of course, they don't want a healthy communication level. They don't want closure. They don't want to come to a resolution. They just want control. And if you take that power away from them, you know, you're going to receive a lot of backlash and just a whole lot of negative drama from the narc. Um, also, another illogical way of them thinking is that um, they already kind of get ahead of themselves in their thoughts. And so they assume that if you're not thinking the way they are, they're kind of ahead of your thoughts. And they, they assume that you already have intentions on, you know, treating them a certain way. When in reality, that's how they operate. It's like they always have negative thoughts. They're very calculated. They're always ahead of the game. And they play this dirty game of trying to stay ahead of you when that's the furthest thing from your mind to begin with. So it's like they're running against themselves, trying to beat you at something, you know, that you don't even, you're not even thinking about. And an example of that is they love to play victim. They love to play the victim role. And when they figure that you're not moving fast enough on their time to do something to please them, they're going to go and complain about it to someone else to kind of, you know, just smear your name to get negative backlash on you, you know, because they want to get that reaction out of you and you don't. But the thing about it, what makes it illogical thinking is that you don't even owe them that time, the time that they're expecting you to, to, you know, move at a certain pace or be on a certain level. You don't even owe that to them. So it shouldn't even really matter. And that's why I say narcissists, they have so many ways of thinking, you know, out the box. And it's just not normal. And it's like they tell half truths. They kind of tell a little bit, just a very tiny bit of what's really going on. And then the rest of it is just like fully exaggerated thoughts that they create in their own mind just to make you look like a bad person. And so... A lot of time it goes straight over people's head because they're not thinking to question the things that the narc is telling them, you know, so that's how it usually happens that way. But when it really all boils down to, you know, confront, you know, confronting you about it, that's when you have the right to just go ahead on and fully expose them for who they are. So they kind of give you that power. A lot of times the narc makes it easy for you to go no contact because of the way they you know, do the silent treatment when they're mad about something they have no right to be mad about. You know, narcissists get mad at you because you don't greet them separately from everyone else, which, you know, it pinpoints their grandiose attitude and personality. And it's like, I'm not going to put you aside from everyone else and greet you. It's like they really want you to just admire them and just bow down to them. Like if they are entitled to that and for what reason, you're no different from anyone else. And the last thing I want to speak on is one thing that kind of proves that a narcissist, this may not have anything to do with their illogical way of thinking, but it just kind of shows their grandiose attitude. It's when they say things to a group of people, like if they are so above you and you're so beneath them, they love to make themselves feel more grand than everyone else, more important. You know, like if your life is less important than theirs, they'll say things like, say, for instance, they, you all work in a restaurant or something or any, uh, any type of little job. And they'll say stuff like, <clears throat> you know, they love to future fake or bring up, <clears throat> you know, people who they've known from the past. And they could be exaggerating about the relationship they had with someone. <clears throat> Excuse me, y'all. <clears throat> 
And they'll make it seem like the person was so rich and wealthy and had they stayed in a relationship with them or if, or just a friendship, someone they known from the past, they were friends or they could be lying about it. But even if they're not lying, it's just this thing they do to make themselves seem so important and so much better than you because they could have had. If we would have been together, this is what one narc used to always say. I wouldn't even known y'all because I wouldn't even had to work. And see, they already have this sense of entitlement thing about them to where they feel like they don't have to do what's necessary to be a responsible adult. They just feel like it should just come easy to them. That's why they complain a lot. You know, very logical. But they're quick to point out other people's faults and shortcomings. But when it comes to their way of thinking, you know, it doesn't apply to them. Everything is just so different when it comes to them. But you, oh, you better work your behind off, you know, to, to accomplish your goals or to get where you want to be in life or to make the type of money you want to make. But when it comes to the narcissist, they just feel like I shouldn't have to do all this to get all that. You know, so that's how they think. And she used to kill me with that, like, oh, if I would have married that past, he's a pastor and he makes a lot of money. And I'm like, first of all, you're talking about a man of God. You're talking about someone who's in the head of a church. And the only thing your your mind is focused on is money, finances, the spoils, his cars, his home, you know, all that you would have had if you would have stayed in a relationship with him and like, who's to say how long it would have been? But that just goes to show that they're very calculated and they always look ahead, you know, because they're kind of planning out their lives through someone else's. And yeah, that's just some of the ways that they think. And they want you to overthink and be confused and explain yourself. They want to get that rise out of you. Because without that, you know, the, su the supply of, you know, begging and just trying to explain or trying to understand and they give you nothing that's because they have nothing to give you they have no logical way of thinking other than that it leaves them empty when you you know pay them no mind and walk away before they can do you like that when you get them back first and you're not even you know like i went no contact with a narcissist before i knew what all that was that's just how powerful you are more powerful than you know before you even learn the textbook uh, definition of all this stuff all the medical terms for narc abuse and how to deal with it and stuff before you even get the tools and learn how to use these tactics to defend yourself against narc abuse one of the most powerful things is doing it and not even knowing it like not even being aware of it but just think about when you learn more about it when you become aware of what's going on and when it all comes clear to you just think about how much more powerful you are and the narcissist is going to forever hate you for that when they see that they just cannot get to you, you know. So that's all I pretty much want to talk about in this video. Thank you all for watching. Leave your thoughts down below and I'll talk to you soon.